So when we want to develop uh, these equations, the continuity equation, Euler's equation, Navier-Stokes equation, and so on, uh, as I was saying, we cannot take the the whole uh, fluid flow range into consideration. So what we do, we take a typical representative fluid flow material and consider it, and by considering that typical material or volume, we try to develop the equation and we have seen that they turn out to be correct representation of the fluid flow. So the two terms that are very common for this type of procedure, we have already discussed it uh, some time ago and that is, uh, one is what we call as consider a typical control volume. Control volume is a volume in the fluid, of course it is arbitrary volume that stays fixed and the fluid passes through it and we consider the fluid motion. While the other way of considering this is that we consider a controlled surface and the surface moves with the fluid. So these are the two different techniques that are applied, that are utilized to develop the equation and also to explain the equation of fluid flow motion and to consider the problems. And this thing was also discussed when we were considering, when we were talking about the kinematics of the fluid in which I discussed about the Eulerian model of fluid flow and the Lagrangian model of fluid flow. In one, you the observer moves with the fluid and the other one, the observer is fixed at a point and then just looks at the, the motion. So these are the two models that are normally considered. The control volume, I repeat again, is a volume, is an arbitrary volume taken, chosen from the fluid flow field in such a way that it stays fixed and the fluid is passing through it, while the control surface is a surface which is moving with the fluid and then the equations of motion are developed. So this is the, the same thing again and the arrows are showing you that the fluid is flowing. As you can see that in the first case when we were talking about control volume, the fluid is moving through the that volume that is arbitrarily chosen for consideration. So the lines through this surface, through this area, is showing that the fluid is moving through it. But in the next case, when we are considering the control surface, that is fixed and that moves with the fluid. So this whole surface is moving as if the fluid particles are moving. And then we try to analyze the motion. In another way is that we consider a small in infinitesimal fluid element which is fixed in space and it moves with the fluid such that the fluid moves through it. This is like when we are trying to deal with the differential calculus and this is also that is why named as differential analysis of fluid flow in which a small element of a particular fluid is considered and then we try to integrate the whole thing and find out a general equations or a general fluid flow situation. Similarly, infinite decimal volume can also be considered in such a way that the moving fluid is equal to the local velocity of the fluid, that is, it is moving with the fluid. So for this, what we do, we, we consider a differential volume element, uh, dV, and this we remember is slightly different from this V, meaning that when we write V in this form, this reflects the velocity while this one is reflecting the volume of the fluid that is considering, that is being considered. 
and dv means a small, a very small infinitesimal element uh, of volume of the fluid flow field. So dv is small enough to be considered infinitesimal but large enough to contain a large number of molecules uh, for continuum approach to be valid also. So that balance is being maintained when considering this. So and dv is chosen such that it may be fixed in space with fluid moving in and out that is of the surface that is this thing refers to the situation when we were talking about the control volume and or moving so as to contain the same fluid particles all the time that is when we were talking about the control surface the particles are moving uh, with the fluid in this case the boundaries may distort and the volume may change of course but everything is moving as the fluid flow is moving as the fluid is moving as a whole this thing is represented here in a diagram also the substantial derivative is reflected and how do we choose it because we try to see the changes that take place during a small change in time if the fluid is having a velocity v1 at the time equal to t1 and then we consider what happens when the velocity is obviously it will be different one at a time t equal to t2 because the fluid is not stationary it is moving and since it is moving there has to be a variation so in a space in a three dimensional situation which is shown here in the diagram in the x y z direction fluid element and its variation is considered at time t equal to t1 and time equal to t2